You're listening to The Prospect Blueprint, exclusively on twoadays.com, the number one source for college coach reviews and ratings, as well as recruiting tips and resources for college athletes. Have a coach you'd like to leave a review for or research before you make an expensive decision? Only at twoadays.com. Hello and welcome to the Prospect Blueprint. This webcast is for prospect coaches and those who support those prospects so they best understand what it takes to get from one level to another. As usual, my battery mate is Mr. Rick Dempsey, veteran of 24 years of MLB service behind the dish. Rick, how you doing? I'm doing good, but I'm waiting for this interview. Um, it's going to be a good one. I know it will be. Well, here's the big intro. And believe me, I could go on for 10 minutes about Coach Courier. Well, you know, it's Coach Bill Courier, the Fairfield Stags. University, Fairfield University in beautiful Fairfield, Connecticut. It's a beautiful campus, by the way. It, it looks phenomenal from at least at least Google Earth. The, it looks like you had a huge upgrade on the fields. It's, it's pastoral. Uh, and we're going to find out a little bit more about it. Coach Courier has that team on all cylinders, all eight of them coming off of a 37-win season, finishing at the top of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, and another appearance in the regionals. He's he's turned a weak program into a, a phenomenal program and one of the best ones in that part of the country. Uh, recently ranked as high as number 25 in the country. Imagine if he had some California kids on that roster. I kid. I kid. <laughs> He's a hell of a coach. We're going to find out more about him right now. Uh, by the way, shout out to Rob Lopinto for the tip on interviewing Coach Courier. We're certainly glad to have you on. Rick, take a swing. Yeah, Bill, congratulations on another great season, man. Uh, I, you know, I don't know how you got your program to the level that it is right now, but you're going to have to give up some of your secrets before you get off this interview. But I'll tell you what. Uh, I love interviewing coaches like yourself because you guys have more passion for the game than any of those managers at the major league level anymore. I mean, maybe not all of them, but I'll tell you, you guys are a lot more fun to interview than those guys are because it's pretty regimented on their behalf. They're afraid of what they might say, so they're very guarded. But anyway, tell me how you turn this program around so fast and got into that win column. Everybody now expecting you to win well guys thanks first for having me on this is a great uh privilege and and, and always talking to west coast guys where uh yes kelly we would like to get california kids to come to the east to uh play baseball they all can't play at stanford and ucla right true um you know when i first got here guys uh it was always been a great school we've had some terrific alumni come out of here like rob lapino uh, uh, we just didn't have the depth. We didn't have the commitment from a lot of them. And, uh, we wanted to bring this program up to equal our academic, uh, you know, a destination place for a lot of our business students. About 75% of our team is in business finance or marketing, which our school is top notch. So, uh, that was the goal to make the athletic program, get some dedicated player and get some winners. You know, we, we look for kids that are come from winning programs and coaches and summer leagues that, uh, uh, you know, really test their kids and play in front of uh, crowds and good people and, uh, and and scouts and everything else. We want kids that are used to winning and, and used to being in the spotlight. Coach, you know, I've been a minor league manager, A ball, triple A, won championships at the PCL. You know, and I, w I thought, well, heck, I've been really doing a pretty good job as a minor league manager. But you know something? Your job is tougher. And that's what I want to find out, because why would you want to become a college coach when it is so difficult to put really good teams together? It is a challenge because obviously in the minor leagues, you, you get players brought to you and you're just managing them in the game. Uh, certainly in college, and this is my 36 years a, a head Division One coach, and you know it. We have to bring our own players in, and we have to meet standards, not only NCA standards, but college standards at the school you're at. So, us coaches are, are certainly always getting tips from alum, from scouts, from high school coaches, AAU coaches. Uh, you can name it. Everybody uh, wants to tell us they got a guy. And uh, just like you, Kelly, right? You got a guy, and uh, uh, he can definitely play for you. And and these that pan out, 
certainly uh, we we try to get them to our to our school and on our program. So that that that's a big part of the difference between minor league managing, certainly in, in college. We we wear a lot of hats. We also yeah. have to fundraise, fundraise, really and do. and talk to alum and and have events and and do all sorts of things all year round. So it's a full year commitment. Uh, certainly not just six seven months. Yeah. Yeah, I did want to bring up the fundraising, but it's a couple questions ahead of this one. And since I'm heavily scripted, I'm not going to break the script, but we're going to get into that a little bit, at least touching base on it, certainly. And then one other thing as an adjunct to that question before I get into my couple would be the having to re-recruit your players at the end of the season. So, by the way, as a testament to you, you have very few people in the portal. Very few people are leaving. You did have one outstanding, outstanding player today. Tell us a little bit about what it's like to have to re-recruit your players, which you really haven't necessarily had to do, but to have such a good player as the one that you are about to talk about. Yeah, the college baseball game in Division One here is, is just gone crazy. Uh, you know, us coaches that have been around and the players that are just – the coaches that have just got there also, we're not happy with it, uh, except for if you're uh, uh, an SEC team, which is certainly top of the uh, pack. But uh, – Having kids that have great years, and the NCAA now allows them to transfer one time, anytime they they want once within their uh, first four years. So, uh, and this was the last year of the COVID uh, class uh, that were freshmen in in 2020. So uh, after this year, they can still go any place they want after uh, a year. So uh, it's very difficult because you you recruit a kid, you give them opportunity, you teach them the game. Uh, you, you just uh, stick with them and stay loyal to them. And then uh, the kid could take off anytime he wanted after that first year. So it's a little difficult to, to uh, fathom that because, you know, years ago, uh, just a few years ago, it was one illegal the NIL money wasn't there. And it was uh, illegal for any alum or any booster of the program to, to give a kid money uh, for uh, playing, in the, playing amateur baseball. So now that's uh, being attractable for these kids uh, coming out of the medial, medi- medium level Division One like us and these uh, bigger programs, they have a great year like this Pagliarini kid you're talking about, our third baseman, Charlie Pagliarini. I mean, he had 24 home, home runs. He had 97 RBIs in 55 games. I mean, the kid had a phenomenal year. Um, and, and the kid is uh, certainly on the portal and he's – you know, probably looking to go to an SEC team uh, uh, or drafted. So um, we're certainly going to lose him. We had a couple others go on the portal also. But this is really the first year we've had kids go on the portal, and it's because they played four years or three and a half, and now they're uh, 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 looking to play a fifth year uh, at another school. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the life of a mid-major baseball coach. What does your day look like in the summertime other than possibly scouring the portal or your network for a couple missing pieces for the fall time? Yeah, that's exactly right, Kelly. We're, we're, we're looking for freshmen to still come in, but we've lowered the number of freshmen that are coming in because we're picking up probably two to three uh, transfers coming in, whether it be a, a, a junior, senior, or fifth-year kid, just to fill a hole with an older kid that's been there that's a little more mature and a little more successful. It's proven more successful uh, by the number of innings he's already thrown in Division One, or how many at bats he's already gotten in Division One. So us mid majors are 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 making that combination a little bit. I, I think the upper levels they're getting a lot more transfers. They're getting fifth year kids, and they're getting them from pretty good levels. Uh, so it's 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 changed the landscape. Big time. I don't think it's for a good in a good way uh, with college baseball because you never know. You can't build a lot of things. If you get too good of a young kid and he has a great year, he could leave after a year, and then you're back to recruiting again. Uh, so, and it's certainly tougher for the mid majors to 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 get a transfer coming in that's legit, had a lot of success, and he's come from another Division One. Or we've had a lot of luck with getting uh, Division Three kids that are very good division three players. They want to, you know, try their last year of eligibility at the division one level. So we've had the combination of transfers uh, and added freshmen uh, to go along with, uh, uh, you know, our success. 
Yeah, it makes sense. And then, of course, there's the JUCO element, guys who might just have two more years left of eligibility who are less likely to, to bail uh, by virtue of the portal. Yeah, we're um, looking for that JUCO kid that, you know, they got to have good grades. We're a, a yeah. very good academic school, so we're looking for JUCO kids always, but they got to have good grades and, and be able to get into admissions. Uh, into, you know, they'd be coming in their junior year, so yeah. uh, they got to be able to slip into a pretty good academic environment. So we haven't had as much success with that, but we would certainly uh, entertain it. Well, my last question of the first round before I hand it over to the uh, to my cohort over here is about the, the the scheduling of your season. When you create your season schedule, other than weather, what elements do you take into consideration when picking opponents? Yeah, we we mainly stayed on the on the East Coast here uh, between Florida and uh, Virginia or North Carolina. Um, we want to uh, look for a. a you know, usually it's connect connections that I might have because I've been around the game so long. You know, I know Kevin Sullivan from Florida, and I, I know these coaches in the South because uh, I've coached and played in the South here a little bit. So um, I think it's uh, important to go somewhere where we get guarantee money, for one, uh, which is usually the bigger schools. So you go down there, and if you knock them off one game or two if you're lucky, uh, that's a real feather in our the northern uh, northeast team's hat. So... Uh, but we're, we try to mix it with teams that are around our level and then a, a, maybe a level of ACC team or SEC maybe. So we try to mix our schedule a little bit. And, uh, you know, and if a North, Northeast team comes back over 500, that's a pretty darn good start. Uh, and then we start playing against the teams that, you know, haven't been outside for uh, two months. Maybe they've been outside for a few weeks. So we're a little bit, uh, a little more even common ground there to start the season off when we get back up north. Rickster. Okay, Bill, you know, I, I just threw my hat in the ring for the LMU uh, coaching job because I knew I probably wasn't going to get it because I'm certainly not qualified. I don't have a degree in college. So, number one, you're out of there. But I want to know what it was like. I wanted to get that feeling. What you have to say to these prospects and these kids that are outside your recruiting area and try to try to convince them like from schools like Florida, Texas, and California to commit to your program. Yeah, Rick, what what has happened, which is a unique case we've had, is our first baseman's from Tempe, Arizona. He was watching us in 2001 when we were, you know, having a great run in the regional. We beat Arizona State at the Texas Regional, uh, and then we went to the finals of the regional against Texas. He was cheering for us, watching us. We had that 28-game straight win streak to go 28-0 to start the season, ah. and he started following us. And all of a sudden, after the season, he gives us a call and says, hey, my dad's from Boston, and I'm coming there, and I wondered if you could come see me at a workout. And we obliged him, went to the workout, and the kid, pretty good player, big kid, and he ended up being our first baseman the last two years. So most of our kids are from the Northeast, but this kid just kind of fell in our lap and was kind of recruited us. <laughs> so uh, it was kind of a different situation, but... You know, we're we're at a place now where we would really like to get kids out of our region of kids that are just getting overlooked by the bigger schools. Or they are going to sit the bench for two years at a school like that, maybe. Or get replaced by a fifth-year kid they're bringing in, or a JUCO kid. So to come here and to play as a freshman and to make an impact as a freshman and to get looked at by scouts because you don't get looked at when you're on the bench. Yeah to get an opportunity to get looked at and things. So right from the onset, your freshman year is a great opportunity. So that's what could be a different of a kid coming to our program rather than a kid maybe sitting the bench for an NC State or Clemson or somebody like this or a bigger school in Division One out west. Well, Bill, you have all the assets uh, that you really need to attract somebody from the, from the west. Your campus is beautiful. You know, and your 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 summer camp is, is so nice, and you probably use that as part of a strategic move to get those kids there to see what you have up in your area that there it is really attractive to them. We do. We have team camps. We have prospect camps, like a lot of schools. So it gets the kids on campus. The whole staff is there. They get to know us, which is important. Um, and and 
you know, I, I'm not going anywhere. I, I've been around long enough where uh, the time I'm going to still coach is I'm not going to jump from school to school. So that's a big thing now because coaches are jumping. You know, you're not playing for the coach you, you were recruited by. And assistants are jumping and head coaches are jumping. You know, I'm not going anywhere. You know, I'm going to uh, fulfill my, my, my years of coaching right here at Fairfield. We're riding, uh, you know, we've won this conference five out of seven years. And uh, uh, we, we've had a lot of success, and we built up a nice infrastructure of success. So, um, so that's a good thing. And parents feel good about that. I end up telling parents, because I had three boys myself, I said, look, I don't want to talk to a coach that's not going to be there when my kid gets there in two years. You know, I want to have some stability and some feeling of loyalty that I'm going to play for this guy that I like. So that that's what we can promise kids now. And it's a good situation, and, and we've had a good string of uh, fortunate uh, success. Yeah. Well, great answer. Let, you know, the process of recruiting, you know, obviously summer camps, it's a, it's a great opportunity for the players to get uh, familiar with your confines and for you to spot some pretty good talent, both for the, you know, long, in, the in the near future and for the, the future, uh, maybe a little bit more of a long term. Maybe you see a freshman in high school who comes in. And, hey, this guy looks pretty good. Let's keep an eye on him and let's stay close to him. Let's stay close to him. So let's talk about the process because I've seen a lot of this going on. And you and I spoke a little bit about the process of recruiting yesterday. Um, but we see really good JUCO players get contacted by recruiters uh, and then they get ghosted. Then suddenly, after no contact and ignored, it fully ignored texts or emails. They reach back out to those players, but by then it's too late. Um, how how easy is it for a coach to lose track of prospects, um, people that they've contacted, they have some interest in, uh, and do they have a CRM? Is there actually a recruiter CRM? Is there a, a training program? Is there a way that these recruiting coaches could stay in touch more effectively with some of these players so they don't slip through the cracks? Well, I can just speak for our situation here. There's there's a there's a wide net that goes out and you're talking or watching a lot of kids and kids get taken by other programs and kids move on your depth chart all the time. Mm. Uh, weekly, us coaches, coaches, our staff will we'll talk about kids and where they're at and what it all circles around what our needs are uh, on our, on our own team here. So, um, you know, so we're looking at kids a bigger number early and that number is really shifting all the time. It's shifting from uh, priority uh, for us. It's shifting on kids are being snapped up by bigger schools. And that's what we're looking for. We're looking for the kid is just going to not quite go to a, a Yukon, uh, a, a BC, uh, uh, a school like that, uh, a Virginia or, or a Rutgers or, you know, in our region here, we're looking for that kid that's not quite good enough or not ready, certainly for those programs. So we're looking for that smart kid that's a niche under that level, but he can come here and play right away. That's the kid we're looking for. So that kid may change on our list, Kelly, uh, back and forth. Uh, because he gets snapped up by one of those and we shot a little bit high or uh, he's a little bit lower than what we thought he was and and maybe another kid jumped above him. So we're maybe a little bit hotter or on contact with uh, another kid a little bit more for that position. So that's a changing landscape all the time by us coaches and our recruiters. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's not like we don't care about the kid anymore, but we're just pushing them off or we're heating up on them. Depends on uh, the level we've seen them play. And if we've seen them two or three times, maybe he uh, changed for the good or the bad while well, we saw him. So in this synergy uh, that all the division ones have now, uh, we can look at a lot of college kids too. These JUCO kids or, or college kids that might want to transfer here. We can really look at them repeatedly, see at bats or as a pitcher, we can see him a lot of pitches in just 10 minutes. Uh, we can see him over maybe two or three years of their, their pitching, their outing. So uh, this really uh, speeds up the recruiting, but it's a changing landscape all the time, Kelly. That, you know, kids can't feel bad because we're not staying in touch with them. It's just, you know, it's just changing all the time. And, and uh, you know, if we're only bringing in five or six freshmen, 
and three transfers, which is a normal uh, list for us that, uh, you know, it, that that's pretty uh, exclusive group right there. We're trying to bring in territory. Yeah. Okay. How, how can you have how can you have Rick Dembski? Rick Dembski asked me a question on academics and stuff. I saw. Him I know. Play. I'm old enough to see him play with Earl Weaver and watch him sliding on a a, a, a tarp that's pulled oh, over the no, infield. Oh no, you didn't watch that. I've seen oh, no. it. I've seen it all, Rick, and I can't believe you're asking an academic question well, about I... college baseball. <laughs> I, I mean, <laughs> Kelly, what are you thinking? I know. Thanks for saving me, Coach. You saved me there. Thank you. <laughs> well, I didn't want to ask this because you already covered one of them. I want Rick to have equal, you know, Rick, obviously Rick have equal time. But I was thinking academic question from Rick. Not that Rick, not that you're not smart, but <laughs> you, you didn't even have to go to college, man. You know, you were drafted at 17. So anyway, you can yeah. ask the question. Well, I'll go ahead and get my head back so I can edit it properly. Go ahead. Well, I, I would love to ask him a lot of questions about Major League Baseball and his feel about the way the game is being played because I did sign out of high school at 145 pounds a catcher, and they told my mom, don't change the furniture around. He'll be back within the next six weeks. He's way too small to play. But uh, your approach to these young players has got to be a lot like uh, some of the coaches that I had that were totally behind me from the beginning because I was so small. And they just did not give me much of a chance. So, you know, when you're recruiting, do you look for things like that where it's just bigger, stronger players? Or do you find those guys on the West Coast, Texas, Arizona, those players who you knew have the, who you know have the heart to make your program a lot better? Do you specifically look for some of those kind of players? We do, Rick. We really look for the, the makeup in a player. You know, it's, it's easy to see what physically they can do. Uh, any scout or assistant coach or coach can can say, yeah, that kid's pretty good. He could definitely play for us. And then we got to see, you know, what kind of grades does he have, for one. He could be the best player in the Northeast or the country, but it does us no good to recruit him if the kid's got an 82 GPA. So we're looking for kids, you know, after we see if the, how they can play, yeah. uh, th their grades. And we're also looking at uh, just their their mental makeup. Are they treating their teammates right? Are they, you know, listening to their coaches? Are they gazing off or on their phone when the coach is talking to the team after the game? You know, a ball goes through the shortstop's leg. Is the is the pitcher throwing up his arms or you know stuff like that? Little things yeah. that us coaches are watching just to see what type of teammate they are, and and it, it just makes an important thing because we're trying in college. These kids really are around each other a lot they go to school together they practice together they're not making money here so they're in it together for 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 keeps here they no one's moving up to double a uh, on the team and you're never going to see him again or some guy's going to the big leagues you're not going to see and he's making more money and he doesn't give anything about you so you know you just saw i saw it in the minors all the time so it's a it's a situation where we're looking for a team chemistry also, it's it's huge on projection. You know, recruiting is getting younger and younger uh, with the age group in high school. You know, all these bigger schools are getting freshman commitments and sophomore commitments. They're not getting the junior and the senior anymore when we, we started. You know, they're getting the young kid. So they're way ahead of us still a little bit getting a freshman commit. We won't get more than one or two, maybe a sophomore at the end of his year commitment. Usually it's a junior for us. So uh, we're projecting kids like yourself, you know, these tall, skinny pitchers that are in two years or three years when we get them, they're going to be 6'2 and 175 pounds, and they're going to be throwing 88 to 90, and they're only throwing 85 with a with – a, you're afraid they're going to break their arm when they throw it, you know, because they're <laughs> like a twig. Uh, but you're projecting the kid, you know, two to three years ahead. So that's what it is really in, in, in college is projecting – and uh, really having an eye for a kid that uh, might not be ready that year or the next year, but the third year when he arrives on campus, he's going to be pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Rick. Um, yeah, you go ahead, Cal. Uh, you got the, you got a little, uh, a couple questions you always want to ask him, which is cool. Well, well that's, that's true. Um, but I think this is the part of the, the uh, interview that, that I like the best because it's called 
word association. And by the way, let's before we get into word association, you're right about the development. There was a kid. My my uh, boys were recruited by Santa Clara University, and uh, the, one of their the kids that was in their class was Skylar Hales. He was probably six four one eighty five. Now he's six four two twenty. Throws ninety seven. And um, I do believe he's probably going to get drafted. So, you know, sometimes, yeah, projection is a good thing. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's always swing and miss. But um, I get it with the tall guys who, who show some pop to begin with. Looks like you were going to say something. Bill, you ready? Uh, no, no, I'm listening to you intently, okay, this is, Kelly. This is, this is word association time. I can I can always edit out these pregnant pauses. This is what I love. Okay. <laughs> so let's go with it. Okay. Word association. I say something and you respond with as few words as possible. And this is usually always entertaining. Facial hair on a player. Controllable. Okay. Is there a need for recruiters to be coached on how to recruit? Absolutely. Players with big social media following. Extra noise. Players with wealthy parents. Especially if they're helicopter parents, uh, I try to stay away from them. Okay, okay. Panic level in the fifth year of a contract. Oh, geez. <laughs> Panic level in a fifth one year to, of... One to ten. And your team is at slightly below 500. Not that you've had that. Our college kids are more worried about getting a job uh, than get drafted because there's usually only a couple draft possibilities or two or three on the team. So most of them are worried about the fifth year of getting a job. But here's the thing. I'm talking about the coach. Oh, a, coach? A, a coach is panic level in the final year of a contract. No worries. If you're doing well, you're going to get another five-year contract. Yeah, that that's Coach Courier speaking. I, I've heard I one coach, we won't say who he is. He's a really good guy. You probably play him. He said 12. <laughs> Literally like that. 12. Um <laughs> JUCO players or high school players in a pinch to fill a quick need. Good fix. With with us, with us, it's not a lot of JUCO kids, as I stated earlier. Uh, a fix more comes from a fifth year division three kid or another division one kid. Okay, interesting. Okay. Infielders that pop the glove before throwing. Waste of motion. Catchers more steps on the runner. More steps on the runner. Catchers extending their legs out to get under a pitch with runners on base. Chicken shit. <laughs> Agreed. Sasquatch, real or nonsense? Nonsense. Okay, I like. I'm you from Vermont, that. man. I'm from, from Vermont. I lived in the woods, you know, next to the woods. I never saw one. I would have yeah. seen one if I lived in Vermont all my life, <laughs> except for the last twelve years. Hey, Rick, do you, <laughs> Rick, do you have any other final words for Coach? No, I, I mean, you, you know, I, I hope I get an opportunity sometime, Coach, to, to meet you. And, and it would just please me to death to be able to come up and see a couple of games uh, at your school. I'm anxious to see what's going on with all of that stuff up there. So um, beautiful ballpark, a great coach. And, you know, it's always uh, nice to see somebody who's changed the program around. And like I say, I just I love college coaches more than major league managers because they have a passion for the game. You certainly have that passion. I'd love to talk to you. So that's where I'd like to meet you in person one of these days. Well, thank you. The older the older I get and the more I do this, the more I really enjoy being around the players and they keep me young and I learn a lot from them every day. Not always good stuff, but I learn what they're thinking, what they're doing. And yeah. I just enjoy the heck out of it. And and the kids know how much I, I, I love to be around them and I love to be loyal to them and, and push them to be better. And, you know, what else could you want as a parent for your boy? Yeah, absolutely. Well, because I know Rick has a dinner date. We're going to go to our player spotlight and then wrap it up. And the player spotlight is uh, a place where we shine some light on players and congratulate them accordingly. 
And that would be three, I believe we have three that uh, we'd like to uh, mention right here and now. It's Cooper Thacker from Feather River. He's committing to UCSD, Eric Newman's program down there. It's about time somebody grabbed him to have that bat sit until late June was absurd. Congrats to Jordan Jaffe, a freshman at the University of Richmond, for getting a freshman All-American designation. SoCal kid who went to a Calabasas High, not too far from where Rick grew up. And uh, last but not least, Michael Allen Stanford, lefty from Westlake High School, home of uh, Mr. Christian Yelich and Matt Franco. And uh, who am I forgetting? Oh, yeah, Lowen uh, Lowenthal. Uh, what's his name? Lieberthal. Mike Lieberthal. Lieberthal. Yeah, Mike Lieberthal. Yeah. Stanford's going to Utah. That's all for today. Again, thanks to Coach Bill Currier of Fairfield University. Uh, great job and, and, and continued success in the future. Real quick question, Coach, you going to get VCU on the schedule this year? Going to get who? VCU. VCU? Yeah. We played uh, We played my buddy uh, Bradley LaCroix three times last year, actually, VCU. We opened up in a tournament down at Coastal Carolina, and he's, he was there. So He's going he's gonna to have a new uh, catcher shortstop. All uh, right. Yeah, you could uh, mention my kid, Casey. <laughs> so it's right. like, see, we'll see how that goes, um, but we're looking forward to it. That's it for today, folks. Again, thanks to Coach Courier and uh, Rick Dempsey. Follow us, retweet us, like, and comment. We are the Prospect Blueprint. Thanks for watching. One other thing real quick, twoadays.com is where our website, our, is the website in which we are hosted, and uh, that is the only website that you can go to to actually, A, review a coach, give a testimonial, uh, give them props, or... We'll just give them a grade from one to five, and that would be twoadays.com. It's the only place for that kind of resource. Have a great day. Don't strike out. Thanks, Thanks gentlemen. Bill. Thank Have you, Bill. Have Take a good care. dinner, Rick. Thank you, sir. I'll be up there to see you one of these days. <laughs>